Well, good afternoon, everyone. Hello, Welcome. everyone. Welcome to Trail Talk. We hope you're having a great day. And we hope that everyone's here joining us. Yeah, exactly. Uh, We've been waiting on you. Yeah. <laughs> We've been waiting for three o'clock to That's get here. Right. Um, it's, you know, it's, it's cold, but it's kind of nice out. Can you believe though? It, it looks, feels, it feels pleasant. It's a pleasant It day. is a pleasant day. Did, can you believe though what's coming again on Friday? I, I know. I I'm, know. I, and this last weekend, it was dang near 80 degrees. Oh yeah. I was walking the dog uh, in shorts yeah. on one day this week, Monday, maybe. So if you're new to Oklahoma, welcome. This is how we roll. <laughs> this, this is how we roll. This is our which spring. Is, which is why I think this is kind of a, a good uh, lesson for today, when to plant your garden. <laughs> you got to get it in when you <laughs> can. <laughs> you got to hit well. The iron's hot now. That's right. I mean, um, so... Uh, there are a lot of vegetables that grow well in Oklahoma. Several. Yeah. yeah. Um, but the, here's the deal. You never know if um, it's going to be like spring. You know, winter <laughs> is going to refuse to go away and just keep dropping freeze bombs on us after everything yeah, has It's almost bloomed. spring break. I mean, yeah. literally, they start spring break, you know. Yeah, next, exactly. On Monday. Tomorrow. Yeah, oh, tomorrow. tomorrow. The last day yeah. of school. Yeah. And, and then... Um, they, you'll have these late season freezes, uh, or it'll be over a hundred degrees in April. Yeah, you know, or you know, random tornado, Ra a tornado, hailstorm. Yeah, or you awesome. can have it all in the same day, which we've also had. Yes, yeah. Well, that mm -hmm. last that ice storm, it was thunder. There was thunder and lightning with that when the ice and sleet were falling. It's called I, weather phenomenon. I, it's called Oklahoma. They're synonymous. They're synonymous. <laughs> anyway, so if you don't have Mother Nature, you know, trying to um, thwart your gardening efforts, there's always the wildlife, <laughs> deer, raccoon, rabbit, squirrel, you know, they'll either get up in there and dig things out. They'll eat all the leaves off. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just and a constant you have battle. the pests and insects yeah, on exactly. top of that. Gardening is not for the faint of heart. I also need to issue a disclaimer here. I personally, <laughs> my thumbs are. Black. I have minimal experience with planting gardens. I have done it. The most successful thing I ever uh, grew was cilantro, <laughs> and I, like cilantro. I do not even like it. I didn't even realize it until I planted it, and I had two bushes that were like this. Oh. I couldn't <laughs> even walk in my backyard because the smell just made me feel weird. Yeah. I, yeah. Anyway, it was mm. a terrible, my neighbor loved it. She would just come over and just pick well, it. I'm and glad eat it. that someone was able to use it. Yeah. Um, but anyway, so uh, I, mm. I like to do that sort of thing. It's just, I know it takes a lot of work and yeah. I just haven't um, done it in a long time. I have but, trouble keeping plastic. Yeah, honestly, off. preparing for plus, preparing for this kind of made me think you about can do it. that I would like to maybe give it a try. Well, if we did that crepe myrtle, I wanted to go try to I know, try to do, get a crepe myrtle. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I was shooting for the stars. Yeah. Why not? So, um, first of all, one reason Oklahoma is a great place to raise vegetables, plant that kind of a garden, mm -hmm. is because we are in zones six and seven. And zones six and seven, yeah, that's, there we go. Zones six and seven are, uh, it, it's in the like the climate, climate zones. And this, these are very hardy zones for um producing a lot of uh, so like a heart, heat yeah. yeah heat uh or the temperature the the average the temperature doesn't get super super hot and the cold doesn't get super super cold yeah yeah so it's a moderate kind of climate and so that allows for a longer growing season basically mm -hmm. okay um it you know you can't grow things year round we do have winters but um it it can uh you can you can have a longer growing season for things. Um, so uh, I looked up the farmer's almanac. I was I was kind of perusing different uh, websites, and the farmer's almanac webpage is like chock full of all kinds. And people of, still actually it's they still use that. Don't yes, they? yes. Well, I just kind of um, selected about a month, and um, I like. February the 14th through the 17th, the Farmer's Almanac says you can clear ground, turn sod, or kill plant pests on those days. 
The 18th and the 20th is fine for sowing grains, hay, and forage, plant flowers, favorable day for planting root crops. And it just goes on and on. The 27th and 28th of February were barren days. They were fine for clearing, plowing, fertilizing. Oh, and a lot of this is based on the phases of the moon. Mm -hmm. I know that has a, lot, uh -huh. has a lot to do with it. And um, so while I was reading all this, I was thinking, they call it the farmer's almanac, but it seems to have like this kind of mystique or something you know it's kind of the stars not that it is the, kind of like witchcraft but yeah. it's not that it's witchcraft i'm not yeah. saying that at yeah. all but but it, it kind of has, has that yeah. like you know vibe right. to it the as i was thinking about it so march 1st and 2nd hopefully these days didn't get past you good for planting cucumbers melons pumpkins and other vine crops now some of those you don't want to plant that early in oklahoma or you'll have uh pumpkins uh to take the kids to, you know, to eat, carve make them a, out. You make carve a pumpkin them pie out. on the 4th of July. I don't know. That doesn't seem right. No, um, no. Uh, the, uh, let's see, to the 8th through the 10th. So today's the 9th. Mm -hmm. Seeds planted now tend to rot in the ground. So don't plant them. Don't plant any seeds in the ground today. Yeah. Um, and if you planted some yesterday, go dig them up. <laughs> go find them little seeds. <laughs> Wait. And don't put them in there. Yeah, because in a couple of days, it's going to be excellent for sowing seed beds and flower beds and for planting above ground crops. So um, anyway, it, it just goes on. Well, I've noticed that the, the seeds and the, every, the planting and the gardening, all of those things are just everywhere. That back, you know, outside section. At, like at Walmart. Yeah. Right. yeah and the, the garden stores mm -hmm. in town. Or, yeah. You know, you walk in and you have that... Mm. just that smell of summer yeah you know? it is it is for sure um now this slide i thought was kind of a, an easy thing to look at this yeah um because you can see where so here we are yeah. yeah we're in march there so you've got a little green light on beets broccoli cabbage carrots cauliflower wow you could have started those anyway there's kind of a sliding scale mm -hmm. on when's the best time to plant and you can see you're getting too far over here. Um, anyway, I thought that was kind of a, an easy thing to, um, to read. To read that. Looks exactly. like you get two seasons out of spinach here. Cauliflower. Yeah. And carrots. Several of them. Yeah. Uh -huh. Well, um, I think, uh, I mean, in Oklahoma, you had that ability mm -hmm. to, have, to have two different seasons. Yeah, because about some of the time of the year and then the time before mm -hmm. uh, your actual winter. You know, uh, Brussels sprouts, I think it would be fun. I don't know how well Brussels sprouts would do here in Oklahoma if they need a little cooler mm -hmm. climate or not. But you know how they grow? They grow on a long Right, Big, I, which I never stem. knew that before. I've made some for Thanksgiving <laughs> and they came on a stem like that. And I yeah. even asked Edie, I was like, I've never seen it like this. I, How do I take them off? I was what do like I do? at a Trader Joe's like two or three yeah. years ago, and I was like, oh, that's how Brussels sprouts grow. They're I not know. glued on there. And they're not, yeah. It's not just for decoration. And it was just, I mean, it was fun. I felt like it was so much more fresh. Oh, yeah. You know, just I left mine off. in the refrigerator for almost a week, and they were still fresh. Yeah, it, it's just, it was really cool. So that's kind of a that's probably a little bit of a trendy kind of thing to um, harvest them and send them out like on the stem on the like that. Yeah, on the stalk. But anyway, so that's a fun thing about Brussels sprouts. But so, yeah, so this is a uh, just kind of a nice little um, easy to read kind of scale mm -hmm. thing of when to plant and what to plant on those days. Tomatoes have a nice long. OK, I will tell you one time I planted a, a tomato. Um, behind my house like on the it was the east side of the house mm -hmm. it was a different house from where I am now and when this started I mean it just kept producing and kept producing and I mean and they take a lot of the water flat, effort, out, the little they? flowers weren't dropping I've had you know the little drop you it's a what's it bud bud drop or no flower drop something there's some condition that they will get Mm. And the little flowers will come off, but the flower needs to stay on because that's where then the fruit starts growing. Right. Is, it comes up where the flower. Will. And there's like spray you can spray to try to make them stay on and everything. Anyway, that tomato bush, it just kept. I had tomatoes. I planted it probably, I don't know, maybe April or May or something. I still had tomatoes in January. When it would get cold outside, I'd just take a sheet 
and go just lay over the top up. of it, put some water on the ground, and it just kept making tomatoes. Are you serious? Yes. That thing just lasted forever. And I've heard that tomatoes were hard. Like you had to water them all the time and I, baby them. I don't know. I, guess, I, I mean, maybe that's just they're telling it's me that. That's happened once. Yeah, but I would call that a fluke. A fluke. <laughs> but, but anyway, I mean, it was kind of nice just go out and pick some fresh yeah. tomatoes, wash them, slice them. better than a fresh uh, tomato. Yes, for versus sure. Versus grocery store tomatoes. Uh, yeah, yeah. So um, we're going to get into... Um, some of these early season things that you can start planting. So um, it's called late winter, but it's this time of the year. Mm -hmm. I mean, spring is still a couple right. of weeks away. Um, so you wanna plant the hardy garden vegetables. Um, they, those are some that can withstand a light frost and cold temperatures anytime between February 15th and March the 10th, which is tomorrow. Right. So uh, I'm gonna say you can probably, especially Send with the weather coming out. on Friday, right. you know, um, but that'd be cabbage, carrots, cauliflower, peas, onions, lettuce, potatoes, um, beets, broccoli, and spring asparagus. I mean, you can plant all kinds of things. Um, it, they thrive in the spring when daily temperatures average 70 degrees or less. So about mm -hmm. this time of year. Yeah, about this time of year. And so these are carrots and onions here planted in alternating rows. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm going to have another slide in a little bit about like why you plant or like plants that are good to com combine and planting near each other. Mm -hmm. um, it's kind of a, there's like a the whole science, science about it. it. Yeah. Um, but potatoes and potatoes are super easy to grow to. Yeah. And so it's like you just slice off a piece of a potato that has well, it can have an eye on it, you know, and you just dig a hole you and like put it in this, that. make a little mound of dirt over the top of it and they grow. And well, I was going to say on the onions, I unfortunately, however you want to look at this, left an onion one time and it started sprouting mm -hmm. green onion mm -hmm. from it. Yeah. And it was the weirdest thing. I mean, I just let it go and let it go because I was like, we've got something going here. Right. Know. Well, science experiment. Yeah. You know how those things happen. Right, you know, <laughs> mad <Brandon>. scientists. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Speaking of the science <laughs> of things. Yeah. Um, but so my. So it just takes the skin of a potato and you can grow a potato. Well, not just the skin. Yeah, I mean, eyes. you slice or you can use a very tiny potato that's. So you need like more, yeah. More just the skin it's or the not, eye. Yeah, it needs to be the outside part. But yeah, you just slice a potato that has eyes on it, and then you just put that down mm. in the ground. Easy peasy. It is very easy. Um, and my family, historically, in my family, St. Patrick's Day mm -hmm. was potato planting day. It was easy to remember, you know, the Ireland potatoes right. and all that right. uh, potato famine I mean there was this whole connection in your head um, but that's why my parents my grandmother my great-grandmother they all plant plant or planted potatoes at that time my mom loves to grow those uh, little red new potatoes mm -hmm. the little bitty ones mm -hmm. and green beans and cook them together. and she cooks them if she can get enough green beans to make a mess uh, that's what it's called when you cook them together it, well when you pick the, oh, wrong. Okay, we got, didn't get to the green beans yet. When you pick your green beans, if you get enough to cook and serve at mm -hmm. a meal, that's a mess. Oh, okay. Of green Instead beans. Instead of a bunch. A mess. Sure. Yeah, yeah. That's what that's what my mom's always called okay. it. Those. That's Kay Smith <laughs> calling it right there. Who and I'm sure that that means my grandmother and great grandmother and everybody else said that. Oh, I, other people probably do too. But yeah, so she can get a mess of green beans, then she's going to have some of her little baby potatoes that she's going to, yeah. And honestly, you just go pick your potatoes early when they're tiny. Yeah. Because yeah. they'll just continue, continue to, to grow. grow. Right. Yeah. If there's, yeah. So, um, and then lettuce. I can remember as a kid going out and picking lettuce and loving this very pale green leaf it's leaf lettuce that you grow not like in your garden it's not it's not uh what is that kind called iceberg iceberg yeah it's not iceberg the tasteless water le yeah water, water filled lettuce. lettuce no it's a leaf lettuce a green leafy you know thick kind of like a buttery butter and, and i i loved to eat that like as a salad my mom would wilt it 
she would cook some bacon mm -hmm. and then use a little of that grease. bacon grease and wilt the lettuce in the hot grease mm -hmm. and then pour vinegar on it. Really? Mm-hmm. Yep. That's that's what she likes. Is How some much? wilted lettuce. And it doesn't take a whole lot of that mm -hmm. lettuce I, to do that. I, your cup of tea. <laughs> I've never cooked wilted lettuce, but yeah, it does. You know how when you put spinach, kale, wilts, or spinach yeah, in something, it gonna, totally it, yeah, goes away. it wilts down. It does the same thing to the lettuce, but that's a that was a something that she at this time of year she would pick the onions when they were just tiny mm -hmm. green onions and pick some lettuce. She'd make wilted lettuce and she would um, just put some salt out and dip her onion in the salt and just she she really loves fresh garden vegetables Sounds and like so it. we grew up eating she has a like way that. of eating it oh all yeah too. she does there's like this whole method but yeah I, when I saw this I was like oh and then see there's a tomato plant right over right. there and that's probably some a squash see, flower right, back there in the back, back yeah there. Um, so anyway but yeah the potatoes are I think they're a pretty easy thing to grow. Um, so then you, you get, you go more into the springtime, man, I know. Heirloom tomatoes. Right there. Doesn't that look good? All oh, those tomato tomatoes. bacon sandwich. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. Making my mouth water. <laughs> um, but this is the time of year from a late April to mid May, uh, when you plant your okra, your peppers, pumpkins, eggplants, that's probably not something we would cucumbers now that's something else that we mm -hmm. have always grown cucumbers seem pretty easy mm -hmm. to grow beans um summer squash the yellow crook neck or mm -hmm. the patty pan we we would grow both of those we never really grew zucchini but yeah um Definitely and the squash. The, yeah they can handle a little bit of the cooler weather and that's you can also plant like petunias and impatience and snapdragons you know all of your little late little flowers. spring flowers you know that kind of get get you in mm -hmm. the mood there um and it's also a good time of year to plant um fruit trees so yeah you've got your tomatoes this squash, squash yeah i mean oh i just love squash and people eat the flowers of it too yes they do they put them in a salad mm -hmm. um now this is uh these leaves i don't know if you've ever had to pick are they prickly they have like, like a, a fuzzy kind of stuff like and if you go it against it yeah it sticks it's like velcro mm -hmm, or something mm -hmm. and so i never liked that that much yeah, you can but, see kind of the hair uh, yeah but yeah you for where these flowers are you can see you're going to have a squash is going to come out and then mm -hmm. that flower is going to be attached to the end of it right mm -hmm. um but <clears throat> yeah, so that's a that's what a just one of those nice yellow squash plants looks like, and then also this is a mess of green beans. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, this is a nice mess of green beans. That those are some them. good looking green. Yeah, they've beans been too. snapped. Yeah. you snap these snap little pointed thingies right. off and um, toss them in some water, boiling water. Yeah, and cook those things up. Yum, yum. Cook them down, down yeah. hours. I even cook mine from a can for hours. Yeah, yeah. I don't like them. Yeah. Um, but they, uh, so like the tomatoes, uh, tomatoes and peppers, they like the full sun. And, uh, but when it gets over 90 degrees, you know how it gets super hot in the yeah. summer? It's going to, it's going to make them stop producing a little bit. Um, unless the production yeah it. yeah just it just gets murdery hot you know nothing wants to survive out there no no um green beans are supposed to be super easy squash these are these always have seemed pretty easy I mean you do have to look out for the aphids or the army worm not the army worms those they're about this big they're giant worms that get on your in your garden they're That's like as it. big as my finger. That's they're see, green. And I they, knew there was a reason I don't do these things. They have like these, and they will eat the heck yeah. out of those leaves and stuff. And yeah. then your garden, you'll just go out there one day and you'll you be like, be gone. What happened to After my all leaves? your work? And there's a big fat green <laughs> caterpillar. They're like <sighs> rubbing his belly. You know, no, you're just good. like, okay, dude. Like, cheers. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah, it's bad. It's a bad thing. 
okra is another thing that you want to plant yeah. during that time. Um, but okra, when you see it and you think, mm, that looks pretty good. That's the time to pick it. You better pick it then because the next day you go out there and it might be that long. Super fast And then growers. hard and they're not and that that's good. No one, yeah. They're not that good to eat. But you know, when you get them little like that mm -hmm. and then you pickle them. Mm -hmm. Ooh, a little fast. Yeah. yeah. And uh, something I've discovered is roasting those things too. Really? I Olive oil I, and salt, pepper, garlic. I like garlic, the powder, dehydrated like ones. Mm -hmm. too. Yeah. Yeah, so okra is pretty versatile, but it's super easy to grow. And their their uh, vines and things, you know how they're kind of fuzzy? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That they're, they're kind of they're like that too. Yeah. 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 Well, that's something you, you know, when you have like at work, you usually have people that grow things and they'll bring things in that yeah. extra of usually it's always green beans or okra, sometimes squash, tomatoes, tomatoes, tomatoes too, people that people get, have extras of. It seems like they can't it. use it all. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it depends on the year, mm -hmm. you know, rain, right. all the heat and all that. Um, so then you get to summer and that's when you start planting things like your, you can plant uh, something else that my mom likes to plant are black eyed peas. I don't really eat black eyed peas, but her black eyed peas have not been making much really in recent years. Yeah. Don't know if it's the soil, you know, they plant in the same little garden spot all mm -hmm. the time, you know, mm -hmm. whether the soil needs some nutrients or something. I don't know, but green beans also grow on a bush. Yeah, you pick those right, off from, of a bush. Right yeah, in the ground. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. Anyway, so yeah, you get into the summer months, and um, you start putting in things that are uh, going to be later season sweet corn, cucumber, pumpkin, summer and winter squash. Like you can like replant, mm -hmm. or you know just plant those later right. in the season. Um, it says eggplant, pepper, and tomatillo plants should be planted around July the fifteenth. Hmm. So, um, but like this sweet corn, I grew corn one year and I had never really thought about it. We used to have corn in the garden and I mean, I'd go pick it, but I never thought there's only about like two, maybe three years on a stalk, mm -hmm. on one stalk. Mm -hmm. And if you grow it in a garden, they don't always get that very tall. Oh yeah. You know, like those <laughs> corn stalks you put out in the fall, they're, yeah, I mean, they're big. I was say, I've, I'm used to see them in Kansas, you know, they're right, like, yeah, no, they don't get that big. Huh. They don't get all that tall and they only produce two or three, three ears. Mm -hmm. huh. Yeah. But man, there's nothing better than some fresh picked sweet corn where it still has the silks in it. <laughs> yes. You, 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 you can't quite get them off. Floss your teeth with mm -hmm. them on the way out. That's yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, for sure. But anyway, um, so one thing that, uh, I noticed was so you know cucumbers are something that you're going to be planting around mm -hmm. here plant marigolds among your cucumbers to help repel aphids and beetles there you go there's and your so that's right when i found this companion planting information that it's i thought so was the calendar that you had up earlier. yes exactly it i thought this was so helpful so, so these so, are what you can plant there with them yeah and you well you have your friends and your foes uh, here mm -hmm. and so you can plant it's good that you plant like you have your peppers well you don't want beans broccoli or kale near your peppers one reason is because sometimes the same types of beetles or aphids are that attracted. they're attracted to both of those kinds so if you have them near each other they're just, just going to go yeah yeah those Main attraction yeah they're going to just eat everything up and so that is one of the reasons that um, you plant your um, your things like this. So tomatoes, you would plant cucumbers, onions, and peppers, which uh, ironically, those are the things I would like to eat with like all of those fresh things chopped up in a together. little salad right. together. Right. Yeah, that's right. Kind of, uh, squash, lettuce and squash are friends. Broccoli and kale are not. Oh. Yeah. Uh, lettuce. It gets along with everybody. Yeah, huh? lettuce is um, the friend of He's all. Just says, I just be everybody's friend. Yeah, I'm just I'm just good. Kale does only has one yeah. friend, and it's onions. You they need to broaden their horizons. I I mean I wonder though if it's you know if kale um maybe you know it has so many nutrients. Does it pull the nutrients? It, yeah, the does soil? it take the nutrients out of the soil and mm -hmm. and you need something so that does really 
like device. onions grow as a bulb they're not in mm -hmm. above the ground right. they're a below the ground mm -hmm. thing so you know are they able to survive you know, there with yeah you? yeah so anyway it was just kind of interesting uh to see this a friend of carrots is dill you know folk. yeah beans onions lettuce and peas are not although that other picture had onions and carrots in alternating rows so you know what? there's Friends. Oh, they are friends. Yeah. yeah. Oh, the dill is the foe. The is the foe. I got that backwards in my head, didn't I? Um, actually, I got it backwards out of my mouth because I said it out loud. Hey. Uh, but like, I wonder if like onions, peppers, garlic, I wonder if those like those flavors. That's what I was sitting here wondering because onions, you know, if you put onions in your refrigerator and they're not sealed real good, some of that stuff in your refrigerator can pick up that taste mm -hmm. and that smell, mm -hmm. no matter what you do. Yeah. And so that might be, it could be, it could um, affect have a like radish that. coming out. Tasting yeah. like I mean, like aromatic herbs don't get along with cucumbers. Well, they might affect the flavor. It's a lot of water in cucumber. Uh huh. Yeah. So yeah, it could affect it that could flavor. Be. So anyway, that's just something that you might want to look at. Um, it might just help you out. What is it? it? kohlrabi oh, is that like the uh, it looks kind of like the uh, stalks of um uh, uh celery it looks kind of okay. like celery stalks okay yeah um anyway so i've uh -huh. never eaten any though but that's a that's just a fun little side that thing good little yeah um and then uh in the fall then or later on in the year you're going to be planting um things like in september and kale yeah. that is a good looking kale isn't it right there. yeah that's a really great looking one and um, it's interesting that this looks like wood chips i was gonna say it looks like mulch or yeah like mulch yeah i don't know if they have um planted this like in the flower garden mm -hmm. i mean it's, it is beautiful it, yeah i mean because it looks plant-like mm -hmm. i mean well it is yep. a plant but, but that's you know, literally it, kale it looks huh yeah so um, anyway, it, you can plant your like second round uh -huh. of things, broccoli, Brussels sprouts. Those ones that had the two mm -hmm. on that calendar. Yeah, yeah, Gar uh, turnips, cabbage. You know how you always see the cabbage and mm -hmm. all that. Um, you can, this is when you plant bulbs, if you want to plant uh, flower bulbs. Like tulips. Mm -hmm. Irises, things like that. Um, and, uh, just, you know, you want to get those things in the ground right before the frost. So now we've got a little sun versus shade. So, you know, gardens are typically full sun. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're usually out in an open area. Yeah. And here in Oklahoma, you, there are two things. It's hot and you're going to have to put a lot of water on your garden. Mm -hmm. So you need to plant in a place that um, you can easily get water there yeah, right you, you know you don't want to have to haul water a lot but i mean oklahoma we a lot most of the things we've talked about okra squash cucumbers sweet potatoes cabbage radishes turnips they all grow well in this full sun mm -hmm. but there are some vegetables you don't want a total shade they're not going to thrive in um total shade but you know, as hot as it gets, some uh, like carrots, lettuce, peas, that's one reason you plant the carrot, uh, the, the lettuce early. It is through producing before the heat before the heat hits. Now you've already harvested all of your lettuce mm -hmm. by the time the heat gets here. So you're not going to kill, it's not going to die Ooh, off. Wilt out there. Yeah. yeah. Wilt, <laughs> wilt in the dirt <laughs> instead of the bacon right. grease. Um, Anyway, so there are some things that will grow in the shade if you would, if you wanted to have a place that was uh, at least six hours of sun probably is what mm -hmm. your, your maybe like on one side or yeah, or, if you, you had know, a big, or sunshade or something that you could, yeah, a big place near your house mm -hmm. or something and you wanted to try to raise some vegetables in it. Right. Um, but then I found this super cool uh thing about native vegetable plants or native plants in Oklahoma, Oklahoma that are edible and there is a long list of them but I just picked a few so the Jerusalem artichoke has these underground tubers that is this plant this right here yeah that is what a I guess if you pick 
like go down and pull those pull the roots yeah, yeah pull them out the root or the tuber is what you eat huh. um so this i this uh, note says the first Oklahoma settlers probably learned what to eat from the Native Americans who would still use native plants for food and medicine today. Mm -hmm. um, the plants will grow in any garden, but if you want to go out in the wild and try to find them, take someone with you who knows what's good. What was that guy's name? Earl Gibbons? Was that the guy that, you know, did the grape nuts commercials about wild hickory nuts or something? Um, was that was that his name Earl Gibbons or Earl Gibbons? I can't remember. Can't remember. Um, but anyway, it made me think of him. You need someone like him who can identify things that mm. you can literally eat, mm -hmm. or you know, Bear Grylls. He's always right living off the land. Yeah, um, yeah. But yeah, the Jerusalem artichoke is the only like vegetable that's native to Oklahoma. Okay. Um, then. Um, I don't know if you knew this or not, dandelions. I, every part of the dandelion is edible. Even the fuzzy or just when it's yellow? Well, I mean, probably just when it's yellow. you wouldn't want to eat that you fuzzy. You wouldn't want to eat the fuzzy The wish makers. Yeah, yeah, you wouldn't want Yule, to do that. Yule Gibbons. Yule Gibbons. Okay. Yule. That's what I, there okay, you go. There you Yule go. Gibbons. Well, See, you made up for it. Whew, I pulled okay. that out of there nowhere. Um, then you can eat violets. Hmm. They can be eaten raw or steamed. So uh, I have no idea. I know you see those fancy restaurants that they serve those flowers and stuff. Right. Edible. And, right. Uh, um, what's that? Cattails. You can eat them. You can eat cattails. It's Serving native. suggestion? <laughs> yeah. Oh, listen, I've got a whole bunch of them. <laughs> um, so it says the raw shoots have the same flavor as cucumbers and you can pickle them. If you steam them, they taste like cabbage. You can go to the base of the stem and eat it boiled or roasted. Uh, part, pull the part of the stem that's underground out to enjoy a, the sweet flavor, the rhizome, which is like the seed thing of it that mm -hmm. it sprouts mm -hmm. from. Um, eat it raw, baked, or broiled. The rhizome of the yeah. thing. The whole dang thing is edible. Now, I don't know if it, I mean, have you ever been around them when they hit each other and they sound like, like little wooden things? Yes, I said, they sound hollow wood. Yeah, yeah, they hit each other. So I don't know that that, and they're full of like a fuzzy yeah. kind of thing. But when they first come up, I think is when you can. Before they actually bloom into this type yeah, of thing. Yeah, before they turn brown, maybe. That's when you pickle them. Hmm. Interesting. If any of you guys have ever eaten cattails, yeah. let us please, know. Please let us know. When and how. And... You know, I'm kind of big on eating pickled things. Yeah, she is. Pickled quail eggs was the something, but yeah, um, the uh, I've never had a pickled cattail, and now I think I might need challenge. To. She says challenge accepted. Challenge accepted. I do not eat pickled pig's feet, though, so don't even, don't don't even, even try there. that. No, mm -hmm. that's not going to happen. My dad has eaten that stuff, but not me. Okay, moving on, lamb's quarter. This is just a wild weed yeah. that grows in Oklahoma. My love, I'd go eat some poison ivy or something. I, yeah, I know. Quarter. Yeah. Um, you can have these raw or cooked like a salad. Like a green. Prickly pear cactus, which I don't know how many prickly pears I've eaten in my life. Oh. When I was a kid, I would pick the little fruits off and yeah. You, yeah, you gotta, I mean, you gotta peel that stuff off. You get poked in the mouth with the lip with those, but you can eat the flat green part too. Mm -hmm. Um, it's a little slimy, but you can, <laughs> can I mean, you get you it can, down. You can, yeah, you can, you have to pull, I mean, you got to pull the spines off and get the, but anyway, there's a native watercress that grows. Mm -hmm. Um, you can put that in salad. There's a spicy crisp that has a, a root that tastes like horseradish. Interesting. I know I'd love to go out with someone and have them show now, me these, these things. Whenever I was younger, now I don't even know, I'm not quite sure if this really exists or not, but we had, no, we didn't live here. We lived in Tulsa area, but we had these little, they looked kind of like they would usually grow around like four leaf clover patches. And they had little bitty yellow flowers on them. 
And I don't know what possessed my brothers and I one day to start eating them, but we did. And they were super sour and we call them sheep shires. Have you ever heard of sheep shires? Okay. Um, no, <laughs> we might I have eaten the dog urine, but there, uh, but there is a purse lane uh -huh. and hen bit okay. are both things that grow in your yard. And I wonder if, if, one of those. if it's one of them. Yeah. Hmm, could have been. Uh, also, purple dead nettles. I don't know if you know the. It's a. It has like a purple uh, button kind of like a a reddish purple button kind of thing. And but it's a sticker plant, a nettle okay. uh -huh. uh, plant. Um, yeah, those are not. The, I mean, the not greens. The, sticker part. Uh -huh, the greens are edible. Hmm. Um, you can eat mm -hmm. the seeds of things. Um, there are. Sand plums, oh my gosh. Mm, we used to drive, plum. we used to drive the country roads to mm -hmm. looking for sand plums. Never and it's, heard just, of them. it's just a little, a small tree that usually they are they're in um uh, what do you call that when there's a, a bunch of them growing together? Grove, yeah, like a little grove of them, or they're along a fence line. Orchard. They're yeah, they're along a fence line. They just grow wild and they're tiny little plums. But if we ever found them, we'd just go pick them and you could make jelly. Oh, really? Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'd make yeah. jelly out of them. Currants, persimmons, blackberries, mulberries, cherries, and pawpaws. Okay. Picking up pawpaws, put them in a basket. <laughs> um, elderberries are not originally native, but they grow here. Then pecans, walnuts. Yeah. I mean, all those things are native. Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, we have all kinds of I things know. that are edible around here. Now, one thing, um, there are wild garlic, leeks, ramps, and onions. I don't know what a ramp is, but I can remember finding wild onion. Mm -hmm. I can remember seeing some. And, uh, and finding some it was, kind of you know, the, the, the top of it that is like a green onion but it's thinner mm -hmm. and Much but thinner. when you pull it out you could smell you know it's onion because you yes. can immediately smell and it, it and it's very it's a lot mm -hmm. smaller mm -hmm. but i thought well why wouldn't i think that you could clean that and eat and that eat yeah you know other than the fact that you know my parents were like don't <laughs> eat it <laughs> well we used to take the dandelions i forgot when we were talking about dandelions we would take those in the stem of it we would pull it and you put them in water and they curl up oh. and it was super cool you didn't uh -huh. have to do anything to it you just you would peel it off in little strips yeah. the dandelion huh. uh, stem and it would curl up now i would go we had honeysuckle bushes mm -hmm. and i would pick the honeysuckle plant off and, and get that, get that little out. drop of honey mm -hmm. off the bottom of it nothing's better than sweet smell of honeysuckle oh. too with your oh. windows open yeah oh yeah um one other thing is strawberries I, people grow strawberries at, at um, Thinkability. Mm -hmm. They have those raised mm -hmm. flower beds and a lot of people have strawberries in those. And I didn't realize this, but um, I, I came across something that said, you, sh you need to really wait for three years. Like you plant your, your strawberries mm -hmm. and you pick all the buds off and don't really let them grow. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Yeah, and just, don't let the buds develop into the fruit. Mm -hmm. And I guess that allows the plant to, to mature develop. because have you seen like when people those get those little tiny strawberries that are so little and you're like, mm -hmm. yeah, <laughs> you know, <laughs> like it came from strawberry yeah. shortcakes garden. Right. Yeah. You're just like, okay, this is hardly a mm -hmm. worth of tasting. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, at the house that we live in now, when we first moved there, they had raspberry bushes really planted all in the front flower bed. Huh. And so the first year I went <laughs> yeah. out in the summer, I was like, well, okay. So Bonus. I was just picking little, they were small, oh, but yeah. little small raspberries. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so it's just, it's just kind of interesting to think about um, all these things. But, you know, if you're a serious gardener, you probably know all of this information and can and probably, probably tell me yeah, a lot more than what we've shared. And if you have, if you're not, you know what, go for it. Some of these um, plants that we've talked about. Forgiving. Yes, very forgiving. Um, you know, just 
read, study, ask the garden people around town. There's plenty of the gardening. think ability. Those people know and that so OSU much. Outreach. Yeah, the uh, extension mm -hmm. OSU extension office. Mm -hmm. They know a lot of things. Some of these plants are um, like pot for pollinators. Mm -hmm. And so we need- They help the environment. Yes, we need things for the bees and uh, for them to pollinate and, and you know make their honey and do all of those things. So we're always, you're always giving back whenever you do something like plant right. a garden. Right. So anyway, I encourage you guys to do that. And if anybody knows a place where any of these uh, native things are, I, just, know. I seriously want to go. I really want to. And honestly, if you've ever pickled a cattail, I need you to tell me about it. And then you can bring it up here. So and then you can Edie bring it. Can eat and it. I would Mary will watch that. and record and <laughs> yeah. document. document that. Edie will eat. Yeah. So um, anyway, thank you guys for joining us today. Tomorrow, Caitlin Godfrey from Beautiful, Beautiful Day. Day is going to be here. And if you don't know what Beautiful Day is, well, you need to watch because it's one of the uh, crown jewels of this part of the country That's right. and uh, started right here in Duncan. And tomorrow's episode is going to start at 2.30 instead of 3. <laughs> so be sure to tune in early if you want to catch it live. And, you know, you can always catch it later. But um, anyway, you want to join us tomorrow. Yep, for sure. A little early, but we'll be here just the same. Yeah, be here just the same. So um, we'll see you guys then. And um, you know what? Yeah. Happy, Happy trails. trails.